Hello viewers, the latest lap time challenge with Indy 7 is one that brings me much nostalgia. It is the Toyota Supra GT500 around Trial Mountain, two icons of Gran Turismo in one combination. So as ever with these time trials, I'm gonna jump in straight away here and do a lap without any prior practice. So the Toyota GT500, I mean, this is an iconic car in Gran Turismo history and around Trial Mountain, again, a circuit which we all know and love in a slightly different configuration with a different final chicane compared to before and longer straights. But yeah, this is my first lap. We're gonna jump in here to see what I can do without really any practice in order to start getting gold times and then let's say within one or 2% of the top times in the world then you are really going to have to hammer in quite a lot of laps to work out the finer nuances of the circuit and of the car but so far the car feels very stable actually perhaps doesn't have the best turning circle per se but it isn't sliding around so it feels somewhat easy to drive it's quite an unusual car in group 3 because it is quite an old car it doesn't always fit within the uh, with the newer group 3 cars a bit late on the brakes and that's perhaps one of the weaknesses of these older cars the brakes not always the best solid lap so far no idea what this is going to be top time in the world is a low 1 minute 50 I think at 150.2 something like that and so for a first lap I think we're looking at maybe a 150 I don't know 153 before I don't really know into the final chicane something I'm going to have to sort out overcook that not too much but definitely some time to be found seeing as I'm doing one lap only might as well drive straight to the finish line and see what this lap time is going to be it's going to be a 153.3 and that is already good enough for gold. 2.79% off the top, 7,791 in the world. If I get into the 51s, that puts me in the top sort of 600 or so in the world. And to get inside the top 1,000, I need to get a very low 52. So I need to shave off more than a second from that time. Okay, so we've done our first lap. It's now that part of the time trial where we try to chip away a couple more tents and see what we can do. 53.3 on the first lap, good enough for gold, not too bad, but there's absolutely a lot of time to be found by continuously lapping and working out the strengths and weaknesses of what I did on that first lap. So the ghost you can see is that first lap, and as you can see, I'm already catching up to it. I normally start my ghosts about three tenths in front therefore if I catch up I am quicker long left hand onto the back straight very important around trial mountain because this back straight goes on for so long it is longer than previous versions of trial mountain in the older games and therefore um, straight line speed onto that onto that straight is incredibly important second sector there a one minute ten as we head down the hill quite an awkward little section there over the crest then back down the hill again this second lap here is 52.5, so we chipped away a good sort of eight tenths. This was my next lap, so a 110.197 through the second split, and we'll see as time goes on that I'll be able to improve that. That's just the general idea of these time trials, just trying to chip away a little bit here and there, and those gains get harder and harder to achieve. 52.375 on the second lap a little bit further down the line still keeping closer and closer to the ghost just trying to work out which parts of the track which corners i can gain on and here managing a 52 zero so we're getting there i would like to get into the 51s ideally so let's take a look at this lap down into the chicane so it's a shame that they got rid of the classic old chicane with the big old grass bank on the side but we get uh, a, a solid exit could be better a little bit tricky on the rear end of this car coming up to the line it is going to be a 
1.660. Okay, that's a lot better. 1.28% off number one. 269th in the world. And that is a solid improvement. We can definitely get towards the low 51s, I would have thought. With the fastest time in the world being a 50.2, my normal limit is around about a second off of the top time in the world. So let's say a 51.2 is definitely achievable for me. Not going to be easy, but it's something that we can achieve with a bit more pushing. This corner here, very awkward. There's a bit of a weird dip at the bottom of that hill and it doesn't always turn in as you'd like. A bit of a poor exit, as you can see the ghost pulling away. Ghost is of course the 51.660 at this point. Racing against my own ghost for the time being. Through the final corner, really easy to graze the wall here on the exit. The rear end wanting to spin up and spin around. It's going to be a slight improvement to a 51.5. So the gains now are getting harder and harder to come by. And I knew that I took this corner quite poorly on the exit. As you see, look at the ghost. Just slides a little bit, loses a bit of momentum. And so I knew that there was more improvement to come as we head into the chicane once again. Really easy to screw this corner up on the way in. And then you really do have to get on the power nice and early on the way out. Because again, very long straight here at Trial Mountain. The main straight has been elongated. Eventually though, this was another improvement, a 51.4. Okay, another improvement there by a tiny bit. 1.12% off the top. 164th in the world. With zero help, I think that's quite a good time. But now it is time to get that help by watching the top time in the world. So I'm just wondering if I can get within 1% of the top time. I think it's definitely possible. The top time is 150.2, which I think I should give a watch right now. As ever with these replays, main things we're watching out for are obviously the racing lines, the gear choices, where where they shift. Let's just take a look. So this this first sequence is really about maximizing track limits and carrying speed. And I think there's a couple of tenths in there for me, just in that bit alone. Here I think I need to carry more speed in and apex later. It's a nice, very tidy run. Back to the left. Really got to get super close to that. Look at that. So when I've been taking this corner, I've been getting my wheels on the curb. But, I mean, look at this. This is actually insane. He's got the wheels sort of beyond the curb. You see there's this sort of line in the dirt. And you hit this invisible wall. So that is the track limit. You can actually go slightly beyond the curb. So you've got to get really, really close and comfortable in this middle sector. That allows you to get on the power. I think this right-hander is so tricky. You've got to really be patient. You don't really want to get much beyond that yellow line. And then third gear gets really close to that inside. You go in and there's all this dirt on the inside. It's a really strange corner here because there's all this dirt and it doesn't really seem to affect your grip. He's already on full power by this point. And you can't even see the exit of the corner. So that kind of shows you how early and committed you have to be through here. And then obviously that's going to give you a really good run here. Shifting quite late into sixth gear, so I think my shifting points were, were quite good. Not quite reaching 170 miles an hour into there. Fourth gear out of the corner. I think there's time for me there as well. 108.7 on that split. I was doing a 109.5 on a good day. Out of there in fourth. So that's something I could change. I was doing it in third through here again fourth gear on the exit once you get the line right and the power application right then fourth gear seems to be a lot better down to first for rotation back to second and i'm guessing third yeah and just run the wall as close as possible a very very tidy lap by jack balding who is quickly turning out to be absolutely one of the the best players in the uk if not the world at the moment a very very good lap so from this point forward i think i've got two clear aims to get within one percent of the top time but also to get in the top 100 and that is at the moment a 51.285 so i need to go another two tenths quicker also i was renting a car just now so i'm going to jump into the anti-social social club gt500 and kill any nostalgia i once had so this car is a bit different as you can see well it's the same car but different livery 
This was uh, like a pre-order bonus when the game came out for Antisocial Social Club. It's a bit of a crime to use this version of the car, but let's hope the pink machine can inspire me to new heights here. You know what? I don't like this pink car. I'm changing it back. So I'm going to be jumping back into the uh, Castrol Tom's car. Kind of makes sense to... There we go. Green and red for the lighting. Hopefully that's worth two tenths. I'm also going to follow this 51.3 ghost to see if I can gain some time this way. Okay, jumping back in. Now, this is something that kept happening to me. Just something really stupid. Just spinning before I even begin my first lap, as you see. Very disappointing moment. Now, this ghost here was a 51.3. So I knew that if I could beat it, I'd be pretty much where I needed to be in the top 100 and within 1% of the top time. Now, it wasn't easy, I must say. Lots of mistakes. This was a very frustrating part of the time trial. Going through turns 1, 2 and 3, getting a lot of penalties, a lot of mistakes, running very wide here on this lap. The Ghost actually had a very good run through that corner. So I think I was quicker than it through the first sector, but certain parts of the track, that Ghost was very good. First lap here, 51.7. It's okay for the time being, but we're going to have to go at least three or four tenths quicker to improve. First couple of corners here, you really do have to abuse the track limits all over the kerbs and two wheels on the grass. And you can carry so much more speed by doing that. So trying to keep up with the Ghost here. I was actually quite good through this right hander at the bottom of this hill. The Ghost actually a little bit away from the apex, as you can see, gaining maybe a car length or so. 30.3 through that split which is about as good as I could do that was, that was about my limit I think for there but through this turn this left hand is really difficult to get dead right as we just took a look just now um, it's kind of blind on the way in and on the way out you kind of have to accelerate before you can see the exit you to be very committed over the the dirt so through here 109.417 and again that's about as quick as I've gone through the second split so I know I'm on for a good lap here. Um, on for about two tenths improvement on the 0.7 at this rate. But we can definitely improve through the final couple of corners and get that time down even more. So coming down the hill, difficult to judge the braking point for this. I think we've done a good job there, releasing the brake at the right moment to get the car to turn in. The Ghost does get a fairly good exit here, just pulls away slightly. And it was gonna, we're going to have a four-tenth improvement. So this is going to be a 0.3. And in fact, as we cross the line, a 3.17. Very happy with that. Okay, that is within 1% of the top time. But it does put me just outside of the top 100. So I know that I can get that. I need to save barely a quarter of a tenth. So I'm now excruciatingly close to getting that top 100 in the world. I mean, I could just stop the time trial now. The time is... More than good enough for gold. Very frustrating moment there where I grazed the wall on the exit of the final corner for no good reason. But then my mic decided to break. Take a look at this. No idea what happened there. But we're jumping back in and finally trying to get this better time. This was, again, another extremely frustrating part of the time trial. And I think, to be honest, I was overdriving quite a lot, turning right on a straight, look at that, straight into the wall. And these first couple of corners, oh my goodness, like you really are threading the needle very fine through there, again, going into that same wall. So, that, I mean, I've only showed you a couple of failures here, grazing the wall on the exit, such a stupid mistake to make, very frustrating. I must have done about 100 retries in this little part of the, the time trial. It was extremely annoying. Getting a 3.55 there, which is a good lap time. It's uh, less than half a tenth off of my best. But it's, it kind of shows that I was reaching my sort of limit of what I can get. Where sort of a low 51, so a 0.3 was sort of, this is my sort of limit now. But here, look, I was two tenths up near enough through this... Uh, split here and I thought well okay if I can continue this sort of pace around 
then I could be on for a point two or a point one. But it was so hard to nail this lap. Into this left hand are really difficult to get right. On the power, okay, but nothing too special. Uh, let's bring this one to the end of the lap. I actually made uh, some mistakes during the second sector, hitting the wall on the exit as well. So just to cap off a very frustrating lap. It was a good lap, still a 0.3. But look at that, 2.3s, but neither of them better than the lap I... But neither of them better. So very, again, frustrating moments here. So continuing, we're going to head up the hill, drifting wide through turn three. Really difficult to get the turn in point exactly right all those corners, considering exiting, and actually I end up doing that. I've just put, I've just put like a hundred miles into this rental car and I can't improve. I just can't. So I'm going to have to come back tomorrow. Okay, guys, it's the next day. I've got my trial mountain hoodie on. Surely this must mean I can now get top 100 in the world. Let's do it. I think sometimes you do have to just leave the console and come back another time. There's definitely something to be said about just hammering in hundreds of laps. Sometimes you get into this weird sort of mood. I don't know how to describe it. But sometimes you do just have to take a break and come back. I did so the following day. And I knew that this time was there. I, I definitely had the sectors in me to improve upon this time and get get within the top 100 in the world. But it was just connecting it all together under the pressure. And I, I think putting quite a lot of pressure on myself to get this time without having to spend hours on it. Um, hitting the outside wall there. This was um, a bit of a different uh, experience here because I just did loads of consecutive laps just to really get some mileage under my belt. Um, the person I was renting this car off probably wasn't too happy because I put probably hundreds of miles into this. Um, very exotic, rare car from the 90s. So another, as you can see, uh, disqualified lap. Lots of red laps on the right hand side. Uh, it was actually very easy to drift wide or hit a wall somewhere. Which is something I've not really noticed about Trial Mountain before because I, I guess you're not really pushing it to the absolute limit. In a time trial, you do have to really go for it and push track limits to the absolute limit. Whereas when you're racing, you're not quite on the ragged edge the whole time. And so the walls just began to really come a lot closer, it seems, during this event here. Um, I'm still following this 51.3 Ghost. I think it's marginally quicker than the 317 that I've set out, like a 305 or something like that. And so, trying to keep up with it. I knew that this left-hander under this tunnel onto the back straight was such an important corner. And I knew that I could probably gain a tenth or so or more if I just got it right. And that lap was decent. That was, that was pretty good. We're trying to beat a 51.5 here, which is my personal best. And I'm a quarter of a second up, so I, this could be the lap. If I just get this right this final corner on the exit applying the power nice and smoothly trying to not hit that outside wall which I've done so many times and it's so annoying to do that coming up to the line it's going to be a 320 so frustrating because it's just 3000 slower than my current lap and um, you, see, you can see the amount of failures I had there most of the laps were penalised for going wide or hitting a wall at some point um, but the pace was near enough there. I just needed to hook it all up, put it together. There was a 51.4 in this next sequence of laps. How about uh, this one? A tenth up into this right hand in this middle sector, really trying to get as close to the wall as possible on the inside. 30.4, which is good. I could definitely do a 30.3. But we're targeting this left hander once again onto the back straight trying to get a much narrower line and that's, that was better we got a really good run there and as you can see with the delta we're gaining all the way down the straight two tenths up on the 51.7 so the uh, delta there continuously changing and I've come to a conclusion really I think that it's probably best to keep restarting the lap and actually not have a delta I think overall my experience is that I drive worse when there's a delta I keep looking at it it is a distraction and it is something that puts extra pressure on you. It is nice to know if you're up and down on a lap, but um, it is an extra bit of pressure there. Into this final sequence, 
Uh, the ghost, I don't know, didn't really take the first bit of that corner as well as it could have done. But for the second bit, it was, it was pretty good. Coming up to the line, it's going to be another improvement here. And this is going to be incredibly close, in fact. It's going to be a 51.299. This is getting so painful, guys. <laughs> I improved, but not by enough. Not by enough. I need a bit more. And thankfully, that little bit more came right here. Now, sometimes you just have to restart, have a fresh mind and go again. As I was just alluding to a moment ago with the Delta times and the ghosts and whatever, sometimes it's best just to restart and just go for one lap rather than lots of consecutive laps in one go. I know I can beat this ghost. Well, in fact, I really have beaten the ghost, but I know I could beat my own ghost and go quicker. I need to go about a quarter of a tenth faster than I currently have in order to get in the top 100 in the world. And it's so frustrating because it's such a small and almost insignificant amount of time. But clearly, it is very, very significant. But it's just so hard to hook it all up and do it all in one lap. That is the difficulty I am finding. So, okay, first sector. 30.4. And it was a high four, actually. There was definitely speed to be found in that first uh, sector. But we're not going to worry about that too much. On to the back straight lap seems okay so far it doesn't seem like the best lap i've really ever done i'm probably about a tenth and a half down on the best i've ever done at this point are we going to continue because i know that there's time to be found in this sort of latter half of the lap I'm trying to carry the speed into this left hand up accelerating just after the rock on the left you can really accelerate quite early there the banking does hook you around gaining back on the ghost it's a point three through that split breaking to the top of the hill off the brake to release the car to let it turn for this right hander coming down the hill you can see i've definitely gained back on the ghost so this is a very solid lap let the car rotate once again applying the power smoothly to get good drive off the turn coming down the hill one more big braking zone left on the lap hitting the brakes hard and they're coming off the brakes to, re to release the car to let it turn this is a good lap through the final corner getting a decent exit here not hitting the wall and finally after much frustration and many retries we get a 51.158 i had reached the promised land i was now within the top 100 and as you can see from my expression i was um more relieved than anything to get that lap done oh my god finally did it the pain is over how did i do that 75th in the world there we go guys 75th in the world oh my goodness i will take that it's been a painful ride it's been a painful ride so certainly a very nostalgic time trial here pleasure to have got within the top 100 thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video i'll catch you next time goodbye